Hey guys, this is Brad with Dallas Geek, and I am here today with... Sheremy Lee! And of course, if you know the name, but not quite sure why, she has been in some of the... Well, some of my favorite. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say the best, but you know, that's subjective. Definitely oh, some of my favorite anime. Uh, sort of online, of course, being yes. the more recent uh, edition, but Fairy Tale uh, being a big one for a while now, right? Yeah, almost a decade, wow. which is crazy to say. Yeah, I mean, a lot of anime can make it that long, but to stay the same level of popularity or bigger for that long, that is an accomplishment. It's pretty mind-blowing, for sure. And then, of course, Borderlands. Yeah! You know, really big right now with Borderlands 3 getting ready to come yep, out. Yep, absolutely. And for the YouTube fans out there, there was a little thing you did with Shane Dawson a while a back. A couple of things. Yeah. I did a movie with Shane Dawson called uh, Not Cool, and that was also a series that was on the chair as well on Stars. And then I did uh, a couple of films with him when his books came out. So we did uh, I Hate My Selfie. We did a short film based on that, which was awesome. I still really miss those cool camo pants. I've been trying to track them down. Um, and then I did uh, for his his horror film for his uh, his other book that came out. We all got together and got to shoot at this beautiful house in L.A. and uh, like watch all of us die. Yeah, and of course you uh, are insanely busy. It seems like all the time, just based on your IMDb credits, just one after another <laughs> after another after another. And it kind of makes sense that you've had a chance to be able to work with a lot of other people that are just as busy as you with so yeah. many different projects. Yeah, we try to stay busy, which is pretty pretty great. It's uh, it's it's easy to do when you like your job and you love working with the people you get to work with. At any time, they say. Hey, I know that you'd also like to sleep, but can you come do this project? And you say, duh, yeah, absolutely. When do you need me there? Yeah, and I mean, especially uh, since you do seem to go voice acting, live acting, online, uh, film, screen, all of it. Yeah. I mean, that kind of covers so many different things. Filming schedules for most of those are all over the all place. All over the place, absolutely. I think in the last couple of years, the industry used to be like, we're going to shoot only during the week, or we're going to record only during the week. And with the internet, everybody's like, okay, so we're going to record your auditions between 11 and 2 a.m., and yeah. then you get to start session recording at 6 a.m. in some studios. Usually it's between 10 and 11, but depending on where you're recording in Texas, there's a two-hour time difference when we're in L.A., so we figure out how to make it all work. With all the different types of things that you've uh, done for acting, voice acting, all of it, What's been your favorite kind of project to work on? So I love, film is what I got into. I got into acting when I was uh, five or six years old because I wanted to be on Barney. I love being on film and voice acting kind of fell into my lap and I love doing voiceover. So when I'm doing a film project and that means like, you know, six o'clock to sometimes 10 o'clock all day, every day for a month to three months, I don't have time to do a lot of voiceover except maybe on a day off and I miss voiceover when I'm doing all voiceover all the time I miss doing film so everyone says if you had to pick one what would you do I couldn't pick I need the balance I love getting to do a little bit of everything that's pretty fair yeah they work different muscles <laughs> so because you have done so many different things how did you get started with acting was it high school or just kind of on your own? So I harassed my mom my mom's a dance teacher and one of her students was um, one of the series regulars on Barney, and so I was watching the show going, okay, I know her from dance, and she's on the show. I wanna do that. I wanna hang out with the purple dinosaur. So I was like three or four telling my mom, I wanna get an agent, I wanna get an agent. She did a little bit of commercial acting when she was young and said, it's a horrible business, very cutthroat. I don't want my daughter involved in it. And I said, no, I still wanna do it. She's like, okay, well then I'll show her how hard it is. And she put me in acting classes where everybody else was older than me and was like expecting me to fail. And the acting teacher would be like, I mean, if she wants to do this, she's, she can do it. She's pretty good. And my mom was like, no. And then she took me to an open call and we stayed there all day. Got there at like eight o'clock in the morning. We were there till eight o'clock at night. And it was like the best day ever. I loved it. it. was under such an adrenaline rush. And they said, if she wants to do it, she did great. She was one of the top 10 people that we saw today out of the hundreds of kids. And my mom thought, this is not going well for me. And so then she had a, a, a friend of hers that was an actor who had an agent and said, look, my kid agent is really, really tough. She's not gonna like Jeremy. She's very, very difficult. 
my mom was like, perfect. They said, you know, if she meets with this agent, you'll shut it down. It'll be great. Met with the agent. The agent's like, I'll, all I have is five minutes. And I hung out in her office for an hour and a half. And she came out and was like, I got to sign your daughter. I have an audition tomorrow. And so that's how I got started. And then from there, it was more work, more opportunities, lots of classes. And uh, I've loved every second of it. Very nice. Yeah. Did you ever end up getting that Barney gig? So funny story, I was working with the uh, director, the producer, and the production team of Barney. We were doing a Christian series called Prayer Bear, and I got cast as the bully. It was supposed to be for a boy, and they rewrote it the second they saw me and said, if we need a bully, it's got to be her. And um, on my ninth birthday, everyone was like, we're going to get you on Barney, we're going to get you on Barney. The director said, hey, I got to talk to you, and I remember thinking, this is the moment. And he said, I hear you want to be on Barney. I'm not going to do that for you. I think it's going to ruin your career. So I never got to be on Barney. So uh, a little part of me wants to like revive Barney in a movie version so I can direct it or be like behind the scenes in some way so I can at least get my Barney fix. So that'd be great. <laughs> you can say, you know, Barney can be a bit of a career killer, but then go back and say that to like Demi Lovato, so Selena Gomez. Demi Lovato did okay. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> but then again, you can also say the same thing for a lot of other kids shows like Power Rangers is one of the biggest ones totally. and then somehow uh, there have been like several prominent ones that have gone on and kept on doing Absolutely. a lot of other non Power Rangers I, things. I was a huge Power Rangers fan. My husband's a huge Power Rangers fan. I got to meet Amy Jo Johnson at a con just a couple weeks ago nice. and I wanted to be Amy Jo Johnson. Yeah. I hung out with uh, Walter Jones and Austin St. John at a con in Australia and that was pretty incredible. Uh, Johnny Young Bosch is such an amazingly talented and wonderful human being. Yeah. Jason David Frank is incredible. I've gotten oh, yeah. to hang out with uh, Jason Font, who's a wonderful human being. They are the nicest, coolest, most incredible people ever. And even the, some of the stunt guys on the show, my mom taught dance to one of them. He is uh, one of the most successful stunt coordinators on many shows on television right now, including Will and Grace. So I think Power Rangers guys are doing okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, uh, Jason David Frank, honestly, I've, I've had a chance to meet him a couple times, and he is honestly as nice as he seems. Totally. Such a zen, chill human being that you're like, this guy could kill me. But he's so cool. He's like Mr. Miyagi. Yeah. I and now, him. of course, that his daughter's been cast in the next season. Isn't that like, incredible? Oh, my gosh. I wonder if she if she was like, I'm destined for this. I have to do this. That's so cool. Oh now, is he going to make a cameo in the next season? Well, I mean, he's already made a cameo in, uh, what is it, three, four uh, of the more recent seasons. I kind of hope he does just because if oh. he was ever going to, this had to be the best that one. That would be so cool. Oh. That would be so cool. To get to some of your more recent yeah. roles that we can't help but talk about. Okay. Asana. Yeah. What's been your experience with that so far? It's been incredible. Um, I've loved working on the show. One of my favorite things about uh, the tone when we went into that, first of all, the production team in Japan has been incredibly communicative with us, which we don't always get that opportunity, which has been lovely. And I've met um, the voice actor in Japan for Kirito and for Asuna, as well as Alice and a couple of the other characters and both of the directors and the producers, and they've been very supportive, which is great. Uh, but when we went in to start working, the English director, Alex Von David, who's also the writer, said, I want this to feel really real. I want it to feel like a movie. I don't want it to feel like a cartoon. So bring your film performance acting. And I, that was like taking my love of film and my love of voiceover and putting it together, which was incredible. Um, I actually got engaged while I was working on the first season. So while Austin was going through her love story, I was going through mine, which was pretty incredible. Um, I've loved working on the show. I was a fan of it before I auditioned, and I thought it would be really cool to play like a side character in the show that I've loved so much. Had no idea, never would have thought I would get to voice Asuna. Bryce is a really good friend of mine. His wife has actually become my best friend from going to shows together, so it's been such a wonderful show to be a part of. And that kind of brings up something else. Uh, so this has been something that has come up with all the other voice actors we've talked to. Uh, how many of the roles that you end up getting for uh, anime have you actually had a chance to typically watch any of prior to taking on the role versus you get the role, you get the description, and you just kind of run with it? Sure. Uh, so it varies. Sometimes you'll talk to the director and they'll say, hey, uh, you're auditioning for this show. There is some content up available on Crunchyroll or whatever the service provider may be. Check it out. 
Um, then you'll have some directors that say the show is so top secret and under NDA I can't give you the title and I can't even give you the character name so we have no idea what we're walking into and can't watch it and then I'll have some directors that will say please do not watch it ahead of time I want you going on this journey with the character as we're recording it so it varies show by show and then of course with fairy tale how did you get that because obviously uh, Lucy is kind of arguably the main character of that show uh, don't tell not to <laughs> so, so how did that end up working out so I've been uh, working in Funimation for a while and then Fairy Tale came about and they were just having auditions at the time they would just invite actors to come in and audition and I had worked with Tyler on a couple projects and he said I'd like you to come in and read for Fairy Tale. So I researched a little bit about the show and was like man this is a really fun show I do want to work on this this would be a blast and I really like the role of Lucy but I thought there's no way I, I can think of five other actors that would be better based on what I've seen. So I read for Urza and I read for Happy and I read for Levy and then Tyler said I'd like you to read for Lucy and I said don't do this to me. I love the show. Don't like dangle the carrot in front of me when I know there's no way I'm going to get it. And he said please just read for it and I said no I really just want to be in fairy tale and the script for the first line that I hadn't seen in the audition sides were my name's Lucy Hartfilia and I really want to be in fairy tale. And I said I'm not going to audition for it. It's going to break my heart. And he goes Okay, uh, let's move on to the next line. I mean, what else? And so he started like kind of tempting me with answers that would lead to the questions until my audition was actually just my personal feelings that were so similar to the character. And then finally he said, this is what you've said and this is the line. And I just jumped in and did an audition, which is why Lucy's voice is exactly mine. Because I thought there's no way I'm getting cast in the show and the director knew better. That's why you always trust your director. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. Between anime and video games, yeah. what's been the biggest difference in those experiences for you? Well, with anime, we're dubbing. So we have the existing animation and we have a script that writers have slaved over to make it fit the flaps. And so we are kind of bound by those two things because we've got to make it fit the existing animation and the performance of a previous uh, voice actor or say you based on what country we're dubbing. Now, for video games, sometimes we'll get concept art, sometimes we have a stick figure, sometimes we have nothing. Sometimes they'll be able to show us a little walkthrough of the world that they're creating based on where they are in the process. Sometimes we get nothing. And so it's a lot more freeing and we really do have to trust the director as he'll say, this is what's happening in the game. Sometimes our lines are completely out of order and we say, what's going on here? And they say, I have no idea, let's call the producer. Sometimes we've got producers on the line. Sometimes we're doing Skype sessions. Um, I would say sometimes it's a little more freeing when you're on a video game because they're creating the world as we're creating the voice and the character. But sometimes it's a little tricky because you've got so much freedom that you have no idea where you're going. So you need as much help from the team as possible to really narrow down and focus on the best performance for the for the characters. Yeah, I, I have heard that voice acting for a game is at a whole different level than a show because there's so many different aspects that you have to cover sure. as a voice actor that it's, you can't even compare them most of the time because it is just so different. Well, and they'll say oftentimes like for, for a, an anime, if we have to do a jump or we have to do a fight scene, we see exactly what the movements are and we know exactly what the response is gonna be from the other character. And oftentimes in a video game, they have no idea what the weapons are gonna do or what a KO is gonna look like for this character. So they're like, give us a couple different ones and can you give us 97 deaths and we'll use five of them? We have no idea what these are gonna look like. Bye Martha. Martha Harms heading to the airport back to New York. Um, and uh, and then for, for motion capture stuff, that's a completely different situation. It's like film, we've got the cameras going on in our face and then the, the wide lenses. And it's almost like working in theater with a black box with a set that doesn't exist. We just have taped out places. So when people go, I do theater, but I haven't really gotten to do anything professional. It's not gonna prepare me for voice acting. I'm like, any acting prepares you for anything. Doing improv prepares you for any time you're in a video game or on stage where they they say, just ad lib, just keep it going. Let's see if we get anything fresh. And if you're not comfortable with improv, you're not gonna be ready for that. Stage is super instrumental for knowing your space, finding your light, being able to interact and bring your body into the into the performance. And also for motion capture, it's incredibly important. Um, and film, TV, I tell people like, whatever you could do, any classes you could take, any type of acting you could do, do it. Take any opportunity. 
any acting is going to help benefit you in this career in any shape, form, or fashion. Uh, then, of course, one thing that I've really enjoyed asking whenever uh, it was actually able to be asked, and uh, Chuck Huber had a, a great uh, response on this one. Every now and then, voice actors are able to see uh, a parody version of the work they've done yeah. a pop up online, and with uh, anime that's becoming more and more popular. And I don't know if you've had a chance to see the parody of Sword Art Online. Yeah, SAO Bridge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I have seen it. I've seen a couple episodes. I haven't seen all of it. Um, but I had the coolest experience ever. Uh, there's an app called uh, Anime Unlocked that Bryce Pappenbrook actually is one of the creators of. And he said, let's do a live stream of Sheremy and Bryce, a.k.a. Asuna and Kirito, watching SAO Abridged. And on the other side of the live stream were the team behind SAO Abridged. Yeah. And it was so much fun. I love it. It was a blast. So I'm hoping we'll get to do another live stream and watch it all together. Because it's like, SAO Abridged is a party. And if yes. you've got a bunch of people watching it together and giving their commentary, it makes it all the more fun. Yeah. No, the guys over at Something Witty, uh, they, they have done such a great job. And the, the level of sarcasm in that is just wonderful. It needs to be there. <laughs> any sort of celebration of any of the shows, any of the content, I'm all for. I mean, it's I, that's one of the things I love about being in this community of anime and video games is... I mean, I was bullied in school. I felt like a misfit, and I feel like when I come to a con or when I'm involved in a production, it's like a bunch of misfits and misunderstood people that finally got together and found their home. Yeah. And we just want to celebrate all the things we love and celebrate being together and finally having a home. So I'm all for it. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And of course, if our audience wants to be able to go and find your work, uh, any of your social media, sure. where can they find you online? I am on Instagram at CLK Star, and I'm on Twitter at Share. Jeremy Lee and Facebook. I don't know what the exact link is, but if you search Jeremy Lee, I will be there. Awesome. Well, all the links to that will be down in the description below, so go check her out. And until next time, this is Brow with Dallas Geek saying, see ya.